So have you heard about box lighting? Well, in case you haven't, that's a lighting setup that I use today that I will demonstrate and show you how I lit and shot these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So welcome once again to my small home studio and for you guys who are new to the channel, this is a relatively small shooting space of 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. However, today I think we're going to go a little bit over because we're going to be testing out a new backdrop also from Studio Clot. Now this is the box lighting that I was referring to in my intro, but before we discuss this, let's talk about the backdrop that I will be using today. And it's this one. This is a new hand-painted backdrop from Studio Clot. This is 7 feet wide and 9 feet long and it is absolutely beautiful. So join me as I set this one up. Basically, I just need to put this on the floor, lift it up, and clamp it on my stand like so. Now, of course, I might fast forward this so that you guys don't get bored, but generally, it is a one-man show. It can be done by one person. So the key here is to do it one stage at a time, not going up too high from each side. And I would suggest that you always go with the highest one first so that it's easier for you to reach it when it gets a bit too high, especially that this is going to be nine feet high. And there you have it, a beautiful hand-painted backdrop by Studio Clot. One thing I like about these backdrops is that, especially when you blur them out, it just gives so much depth because of the texture that's actually created using paint and the color combination. Okay, so now this is box lighting. All right. This is technically just a scrim. What is a scrim? It's a, well, it's a reflector that's used primarily as a reflector or a diffuser. Now, a scrim is normally used in production work, and it's something that I would recommend to always have in the studio because it is very versatile. Box lighting technically is very similar to a softbox, but there is one big difference. What we're going to do is we're going to put my light here. It's going to bounce off this white reflector part here, and then it's going to bounce through this scrim in front, which is basically the diffuser. So what happens is that you get light, let me put it sideways this way, you get light coming from here that's bounced off this white material which already softens the light. And the moment it bounces off here, it spreads the light and you get a very big light source going through this fabric here, therefore creating beautiful soft light that mimics that of a window. So what light will I be using? Well, it's actually here. I will be using an ordinary speed light. This is a Sony F60RM version 2 on the MagMod MagShoe. So what I'll do is I'll put it here using basically just a Manfrotto arm so that I can control where this direction will be, like so. Having it like this, I can make it go through here bounce through here and then give a beautiful soft light as I said earlier. Now this is just one piece. Now let's talk about the camera that I will be using today. So the camera that I'm going to be using today is my Sony a7R Mark V with a 50mm 1.2 GM because I want to do a half body shot. Now I chose 1.2 GM thinking that I want to blur out the background but as you can see the backdrop is just so beautiful also that I want to see the textures in the background. So this time I think I want it to be in focus also. Therefore, my settings will be 1 over 250 f5.6 ISO 100. Now you could see my phone right here. It is actually recording a live feed from my camera using this one. This is the new Axoon See Me Go. It allows me to connect my camera via HDMI, then from here it connects via lightning, therefore I can record everything that my camera is seeing. Thus, all the images you will be seeing from here on end will be straight out of camera. Absolutely no editing will be done until maybe the very end where I will show you the edited photos. 
Now what else? I have my white balance set at 5600 as you can see here and everything else is really standard. I have my focusing on whatever focusing because it's just going to focus on the eye because this Sony cameras are really amazing. You could see now that this is a live view of what my camera is seeing. That's why it's pitch black. But look what happens when I turn on my trigger. By the way, my flash, my F60 RM2 is remotely controlled using this one. This is a WRC1M for Sony. Therefore, when I put this here and turn this flash on, look what will happen. Immediately, it will turn off live view so that I can see what I am actually shooting. So I guess with that out of the way, it's time for me to call in my wife, Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. As usual, you look fantastic. So you know what? Let me go through this entire lighting setup again. You can see here, this is box lighting right there. So the light is basically facing this white area here that's going to bounce again on this white portion, then go through the diffuser panel in front, therefore giving us a beautiful directional window light. Yes, this can be done with a softbox. However, with standard softboxes, you, you see this, babe, right? When we talk about it, Standard soft boxes will have a light shine through the diffuser. Even if it has an inner diffusion panel, there will still be a hot spot. This one technically removes those hot spots, giving you a nice even light. That's why Coco's outfit is like this, because we want it to be as soft as possible, as casual as possible. Now, that's also part of shooting, huh? You have to make sure that whenever you're shooting, it's just not just for the sake of shooting, everything should look good together. So now even Coco's pose will be facing the light as if she was just facing the window. Beautiful, beautiful window light. And smiling, babe. There. Yes. Oh, fantastic. You look fantastic. Can you move forward a bit? Sorry, it's at 1 over 200 there. Perfect. Maybe slightly back. This way. All right. Perfect. Nice. Then more pensive, which is a hint of a smile, but smiling with your eyes. There. Perfect. Lovely. You could lean towards the window. It's like you're looking towards outside the window, seeing something beautiful there. And then just a hint of a smile. There we go. Now, it actually looks good right now. But since we have beautiful existing ambient light in the studio, we can actually use that ambient light to our advantage. You could see the images that we're taking. There's a little bit of contrast, which I really don't mind. However, I always like controlling my shadows. So if I'm going to control my shadows, I can bring in my ambient light now just by merely adjusting my shutter speed. So this is what I'll do. I'll turn off my flash again, and then I will adjust my shutter speed maybe to about 1 over 60. Now at 1 over 60, you could see we have a lot of, well, not really a lot, but we have light leak on this side of her face. The light is coming from this side, lighting the short side of Coco's face. Therefore, this light opens up the shadow. So let me turn on my flash again. And look at that. It's just so surreal. It, there's a hint of contrast there. Maybe slightly, I'll make it 1 over 100, just to get that nice contrast, because contrast will give you beautiful texture, and it's going to give you that depth, that 3D depth. All right, babe? See, I'm actually posing with you, so I'm putting my hand inside a pocket too. Maybe you could lift this leg up, the left, yeah. Nice. And then don't lean back too much. Lean towards uh, there. And then chin towards me here. Nice. That's it. With a hint of a smile on your face. There. That's it. That's it. It's like you saw the kids playing outside. Like they're there in the garden. Here, pretend that these are trees and you could see that the kids are there playing. There. Oh, there. That's beautiful, babe. That's fantastic. And that's actually beautiful. That is box lighting for you guys. It's a simple, simple, simple light setup. It's merely just, thank you very much, babe, again. So let me recap. This is box lighting. I essentially have a reflector here that's angled in a certain way so that it gives a good direction of light. 
the light bounces off this white um, fabric here, therefore dispersing the light and making it softer. Then it is diffused even further by this panel right here. This is just a diffusion panel. Technically, this is a scrim. So these scrims come in different sizes and different price points, but they're relatively inexpensive. And it's held together using, it's held in place using this one, a grip. Um, I think this is called a grip something. I forgot what it's called, but it's the one for the C-stands. Then I have a Manfrotto arm here holding on to my Sony F60 RM Mark II. Now the backdrop that we're using is once again from Studio Clot. It's seven feet wide and nine feet tall. Perfect for the small home studios. They also come in different sizes like five by seven. Then what else? I think that's basically what I wanted to show you guys today. A very simple lighting setup that's not really used very often. Box lighting. Okay, so if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you guys are wondering what this is, it's a new mic from Saramonic that I am testing out. It's a Blink Me B2 because I plan to bring a lot of my instructional, or I plan to do more instructional videos for you guys outside the studio. And a portable mic like this would be perfect because it's a dual mic. In other words, I can have another one on top of my camera so you could hear the voice of Coco in future videos. Okay, now if you want to check out some of the images that I've created, you can follow me in my social media channels in Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Basically, it's all Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.